gonna showcase what an advanced trainee's off-season training looks like. We're gonna walk you through my exact workout split. And some of you might be saying, Brendan, aren't you a few weeks out from a meet and you're hitting all those PRs? Why are you going into the off-season? So unfortunately, my very first meet I was supposed to do got postponed. It's being pushed back to February. And then the backup meet I found, which was the only meet in the time frame I could do and peek into, um, that meet unfortunately is gonna cost me over $1,000 to do because I'd have to travel, get an Airbnb, et cetera not worth it to me. So now we're gonna go back to off season, which sucks because I honestly was hitting bigger PRs than I've ever hit on the squat and deadlift, but that's okay. What I wanna do now is actually showcase you guys some really cool stuff. So we're gonna get mic'd up. We're gonna walk you through an entire bench press and upper body workout today. And I wanna show you guys my off season split, especially for those of you guys who are really busy in the gym, but still want maximal results. So I'm actually only training three times a week. And so let's actually discuss my workout split first. And I'm gonna walk you through example workouts throughout the workout split so you guys can get an idea of how this is running and my thought process behind everything so it's really straightforward I basically have a bench press centric day I have a deadlift centric day and I have a squat centric day three times per week I'm also adding a little bit of locomotion in during the week so I'm gonna be doing a little bit of running on a fourth day just to get my cardiovascular levels back in shape the more I advance the more I realize taking care of your body and balance is absolutely critical for staying injury free. And that's part of the reason I'm not actually gonna max out. I think if you're an intermediate athlete, you should finish your peak even if your meet gets canceled or something because I think it's important to express that strength and have practice in like a gym testing scenario or a meet scenario where you get to emulate meet day and that allows you to get better at the sport of powerlifting. But me, I don't need that practice. So it doesn't make sense to risk injury and go do that for honestly no reward because I'm one of those big believers that if it's not done in a meet, to me, that's not powerlifting. That means you're really strong in the gym, which is super cool, but that's not powerlifting to me. I'm the guy who likes to show up and actually do it on meet day because that's way harder to do. So without further ado, we're going to walk you through my bench press day. Just as an overview, I'm going to put the workout on the screen here, hopefully somewhere around here or here. Daniel, my editor, who's amazing and also a lifter, uh, he, he can tell you uh, where the workout split's going to go. Hey guys, also every Everyone roast Daniel in the comment section down below. Daniel doesn't like doing his deadlifts. He likes using the Smith machine too much. Not that there's anything wrong with the Smith machine. Chris Bumstead loves that Smith machine, but I want everyone to roast Daniel in the comment section so we can get him to actually do some heavy squats, some heavy deadlifts. This kid's actually got really good genes, man. And I, I secretly want him to just try a little bit of power building to blow up his physique. Anyway, uh, all jokes aside, Daniel's gonna hate me for that. We're gonna walk you through today's workout. Now, normally I would just keep today towards a bench press day, but I'm gonna be doing incline bench press. And the reason why is just the shoulder. So as I was progressing through this meat prep, my shoulders got in significantly better. But when you're in meat prep, you have to lift so freaking heavy and hard that it was like on the brink of re-injury. So I decided in this off season, it makes sense just to go to incline bench press, which really pushes my comp bench press anyway. And then once this injury is completely in the past, which I think it's almost there, then I'll implement regular bench press and honestly it'll be a nice mental refresher but more importantly we're working on a ton of movement deficiencies so again I wouldn't necessarily say intermediates have to go run and do all of what I'm going to show today but there is some reality that you need to prepare your body in the off season to go handle the grueling you know super heavy meat prep your body's going to be unstable you're going to be fatigued you're going to be beating your joints into the ground and so I like preparedness in the off season and I think this needs to come back in vogue in powerlifting training because I see way too many people injured. So not only are we doing incline bench press and then we're going to do some OHP, that's kind of like the strength work. Then we got some stuff that's going to be more bodybuilding and more importantly, what I call movement centric. So we have dumbbell Z press, which is amazing for your hips, your hip flexors, your shoulder and scapula health. It's a really good exercise to force you into mobility positions while still training the shoulders. We're going to be doing some pause dips to really work on the end range shoulder extension. I go deep on those things. Uh, we're gonna be doing some deficit push-ups for a closed chain horizontal press that allows my scapula to be more free moving. We're also gonna be doing some arm work and then some shoulder work. And then at the end, I got an ab circuit. You're gonna notice this whole off season's really ab centric. Every day I'm trying to train a little bit of abs because I'm a big believer that if you train your hip flexors and your abs, you stay very healthy as a power lifter. So without further ado, let's get mic'd up. Let's hit these workouts. 
Okay, hopefully the music in the background is not too loud, but I also got to train. Guys, do me a favor, give this video a like, thumbs up, and comment right now. Just comment whatever the f you want. Just go roast Daniel in the comments. That's what today's comments are gonna be about. It's 12 p.m. I walked in to film this video at 11 a.m. Technical difficulties with training, really, really hard. So let me turn this down just a little bit. So we got to incline bench press here. You guys gotta appreciate the effort it takes to make YouTube videos. Also, real quick, before we dive into this, guys, look at these, look at these nice fitted shorts, man. Look at that, that hug on the quad. See, I like my stuff fitted, but you know, you can always size up. These are mediums on me because I got a tiny waist, but bigger quads, but I like the way it comes out. But I got a few larges here too, so go check out Barbell Apparel, links down below. This, this shirt's from there too, this is an XL. Look at the hug on the arms. We got guns, I don't even, my arms are small. It's my worst body part too, so. If you guys got small arms, but you want the illusion to trick girls into thinking you have big arms, go buy Barbell Apparel. So we got incline bench press here. Um, incline bench press to me is the king of upper body pressing, honestly. like. It's the most smooth feeling press that is available. Uh, comp bench always feels like you're gonna die. I actually watched an interview with uh, Chris, uh, God, is his name Williamson? Um, Zach Tellender's, I think, roommate, but he's got that amazing podcast, but he had Phil Heath on, and Phil Heath was saying how, you know, regular bench press always feels like you're dying, but incline feels really smooth, and I actually agree with that. But that interview is hilarious because Phil Heath is like answering what 10 exercises he would do for life if he could only choose 10, and he answers from such a bro bodybuilding perspective on like what would make his upper chest look good and like what body parts to bring out, and I would answer that more from like a health and function standpoint, and it shows you bias with like your training modalities, right? Like to him, everything's aesthetics. To me, it's like, what can my body do? With a little bit of aesthetics, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, maybe I'll do a video on the 10 exercises I think everyone should do or some shit. So incline bench press, let's go. I can talk while I'm doing these warm up sets. My goal with incline is always a ton of explosive leg drive, clean pausing, really smooth soft touch and just generating a lot of force through the sticking point. So the benefit of incline is you get a ton of force and range of motion that you have to overcome this huge sticking point in. And it really allows the bench press to shine because your bench press sticking point will feel abysmally small compared to this once you get really good at it. Let me grab some 25s here. So we got a set of four, ascending sets of four at RP8. And then I got OHP. So really low volume. And that's just to let the body heal up and recover from the grueling prep I was in. When you're advanced, you don't need a ton of volume. Training works inverse. The more advanced you get, the less you need. In your intermediate stage, it's like the opposite. It's like, you think like, how can I do more without getting beat up, of course. But when it's advanced, it's like, how can I do the most minimal amount and make progress? Because that's really how you stay injury free and actually get the strongest. All right. So we gotta start, find a set of four at RP8. Oh, that was a weird touch point. I gotta get this down again, it's been a while. I'm gonna take my necklace off. So, shoulder's still a little banged up, even on incline, which actually feels better than comp bench. But that's kind of the reality of this. So, let's keep working up to this top set. I'm gonna fast forward the video now and get to something fun. Okay, we got 245 loaded up here. Probably gonna get to 265, but we'll see. I'm gonna hit this because we got ascending sets first. So I wanna get some pre-fatigue in there. Now, one problem in fitness right now, guys, is extreme specialization, which I think specialization is a good thing, meaning, you know, specializing towards powerlifting or CrossFit or bodybuilding or, you know, name your, your poison. But if you go all in on it, especially if you're not at the pinnacle of the genetic pool and potential, to me, I would never sacrifice my functionality of my body and my flexibility, my cardiovascular health and these things purely just for a sport that I can't even be the best in. You know, when it comes to being like an Ashton Ruska or a Bob Matthews or a you know, John Hack or whatever, for them it makes a lot of sense. 
But even actually those guys, ironically, I don't see them as one dimensional. That's kind of the funny part. Like a lot of people don't realize the shape Ashton's in because of the military and same thing with uh, Bob with his crazy calisthenics and stuff. And like, you know, obviously now they're putting some of those things on the side to reach their pinnacle, but they didn't even heavily specialize to later in their career. But there's these like peewee power lifters out there. And I mean, no offense to you guys, but like seriously, like if you just live, eat, breathe and sleep power lifting, you're actually probably getting worse results because of it because you're degrading your body very quickly so not my cup of tea but let's keep benching so incline we got 245 i'm going closer grip right now because it feels healthier um and it's a little bit harder because the range of motion is even longer but that's okay was easy. I'm gonna go at least 265. Maybe we'll go 275. We'll see. Okay. I opted for 275. I was really long pausing the last set. So I think I got this at RP eight. If it's a little overshot, that's okay. Cause we just got this top set and then we're on to overhead press. Whoo. Let's get this guys. We got a little movie track coming on. You guys know I like that movie music for when I'm lifting. A lot of people say it's corny and it, it is if you ain't into it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go, B. Let's go. We'll get that long pass, too. Nice and smooth, woo, all right. Good start, good start. Okay, we got OHP warmed up and loaded up. Uh, first set is a set of 10 at RP7. Next set's a set of eight at RP8. Last set is a set of six at RP9. Now overhead press, guys, it's all about this. You get this tight, you get a good base of support, you're gonna be able to press more. So I've really, really nailed my form down on OHP the last couple years. And for me, it's moderate width, nice arch, scaps down in the bottom, scaps elevated in the top. It's a free scap movement. You gotta move the scapulas. It's all about power. Now, key with OHP, the reason the skinny USAPLers don't like it, I'm sorry, I gotta roast them. I gotta roast them in every video is because they don't leave it in long enough to see the benefits. OHP is the, the long haul. It's the, the, the small investment, but incrementally over time, it adds up. So you gotta leave this lift in for like six months straight to see the benefits. And especially if you've got longer arms like I do in the bench press, benefits are huge. Makes you super powerful, super, super powerful off the chest. Your shoulders are in a ton of extension on the chest. If you got good power to get down there, whew. But here's the key, you gotta touch the clavicle in the OHP because you want that deep shoulder extension. Otherwise, you're not going to build power with where your shoulders are at in that bottom range of the bench. All right, set one. Let's go. I'm going no belt, no wrist straps, just raw. Right, that seems a little light. So that was actually perfect. <sighs> High reps get you, especially on longer ranges of motion. Felt light until the end. You gotta be careful with these. We're gonna go up about five, 10 pounds. Let's go. All right, we got 155 loaded. I know it doesn't look like it because they're probably looking fast, but I'm telling you, that was RP8. We're gonna go up another 10 pounds. That was 155. All right, 165 for six. I'm dying, the, the arms are burning, the volume's already getting to me. I took that set a little quick. I'm trying to hurry because I got work. 
That was probably RP9.5, but that's okay. Let's move on. Dumbbell Z press. Time to work some mobility and movement. Okay. Let's get in, in shape again. This is going to be bad. So, you know what? I'll do this facing the camera at first, and then I'll show the back view. So the way I get into position for these, because I got to stretch the hips, is I actually usually start kind of one leg at a time like this. A normal V-sit D-press or Z-press, dumbbell Z-press is going to be the legs out. And I really like it for hip flexor strength, mobility, and stability. It's not strength that we know it as a power lifter, but strength in isotonic positions and or what some will call isometric, same thing. Um, the idea here though is like postural integrity. So let me put it to you this way. If you can actually hold a legit um, pancake V-set while doing an overhead press with good scap movement, whew, you're, I promise you, you're gonna be able to get under a squat bar, get in the deadlift and bench press and be way more pain-free, way more free moving and have access. Access is power, access is strength. Okay, so when you, when you do this, understand I'm not doing this for shoulder stimulation. I just got shoulder stimulation. I'm doing this for access and movement that makes me better later. So I'm gonna kind of stretch out the legs here. And this is always, man, I'll, I'll insert a video of when I was super lean and mobile and doing these on a regular basis. But nah, shit, I'm, I'm 230 and fat right now. This is what powerlifting does to you. And you have to do it. You gotta get big to be good at powerlifting. But what we're gonna do is kind of slowly work ourselves into this nice provocative position. I'll give you guys my OnlyFans link here in a second. We're just gonna press. Like to keep the hand out. Three. Oh. Notice the scap movement. Try and touch the ears. Okay. And all you need is about eight to 10 reps. Nothing crazy. This is always my bad side. You'll feel obliques, you'll feel hip flexors, you'll feel scapula, shoulder, all sorts of shit. Woo. And the cool thing is, you don't really need too much rest. So I'm gonna get a back view here. And again, Daniel, if I don't send it to you, let me know. I wanna show them. And I was actually good at these. And you gotta kinda wiggle yourself in and get better week by week. Oh my God, I'm tired, okay. I'm just going for two of them, just to loosen me up. I'm not looking for annihilation here, guys. Just looking for a little stimulation and movement access. You feel tremendously better. Okay, now what you gotta do is do the power lift and rest where you lay on the floor. Whew. This, is, uh, this is what my girlfriend sees when she's on top. <laughs> okay, we got some dips right now. Let me get this music down a little bit, hold on. So we got some dips. Now, I'm just gonna do these body weight because uh, still rehabbing the shoulder and this used to bother the shoulder a little bit. And I'm just gonna go real slow. Plus this rack is not very good for dips. It's very shaky. But um, the key with dips is again, deep shoulder extension. So we got two sets here, then we got some push-ups. You'll notice also in the program, there's a lot of diversity. So diversity, especially when you get more advanced is key for staying injury free. This is why in the West Side Method years and years ago, they always switched out exercises every week. That was because they found they get beat up if they did the same repetitive exercises, especially with how heavy they were lifting in gear. Now that's an extreme example. And again, I don't think intermediate should do that. And I don't even do that. I use the same main exercises week after week, but you do have to have a lot of diversity. The more advanced you get it, when you're a beginner, you need the opposite, especially intermediate. It's like too much diversity is a bad thing because you're diversifying something you're not an expert in. So if, if you don't have a lot of practice on the barbell yet, like
like you need more sets and more rep repetition to get better and to reach that level of mastery. Once you've reached mastery, it's more like a diversification because what I can do in one total set on my body is way more destructive to my connective tissues and to the CNS than like what you do in three sets. And so hopefully that's making sense. So we're gonna start here. These are not warmed up yet, so I'm gonna go nice and slow. Really allow the shoulder to stay healthy here. And again, my goal is as deep as possible and staying nice and stable, really holding that lockout in the pecs. So I try to squeeze the pecs at lockout, get the scapula to move down. Now at my best, I was doing three plates for reps, touching my nose to the bar like you see me doing here. I always touch my nose to the bar. That's my barometer of range of motion. <sighs> too many people do this. They stop like right here. Like what the f is that? That's too easy, guys. I could do like five plates like that. <sighs> And then if you want to make these harder, tuck in the legs in front, whoo, on the abs, and the, the center of mass changes. Whew, that's killer, just right there. I'm detrained from these. So we're gonna do one more set, but we'll show you the push-ups next. Okay, we got some push-ups here. This is gonna be a little tricky because I got them elevated, but these handles are a little slippery on here. I might need a mat. Fuck, we're gonna try this out. Hopefully I don't eat shit. So my goal here is to get some more elevation. I wish I had parallel handles, but I just got these small little ones. Now again, when I was at my best here with this kind of movement, actually this needs to shift over. So you gotta get the, the parameters right. So when I was at my best, I was using three plates on my back on a bigger deficit than this. It's pretty rad. But today, just body weight, intro the tissues. So look at the extreme extension I get in the bottom. I purposely allow the back to arch and all the way protract at the top. So when I lock out, boom, look at the scapula protract and then retract on the way down. shape we're gonna lean out we're gonna get healthy I'm just gonna move man I like being uh, more functional in the off season you know I like feeling like I'm healthy I can move like if I got to go actually do something in the real world I can commit the body without being this big ogre who's inflexible I'm definitely a long way away from the shape I was in back in 2021 and 2022. But I want to balance this. You know, I really still want to hit a 2,000 pound total or as close to it as I can possibly get. So it's hard, you know? And that's actually what makes it so cool to me. It's like, I don't just get fat. I don't just get big and strong. It's way easier that way. I could only imagine how strong I would get if right now I just kept gaining weight and went into off season and kept building but I don't want to do that to my body. And honestly, more importantly, the, the more I say that out loud, the more I realize I would just end up f***ed up and injured because I don't got the joints for that. You know, some of the bigger, burlier guys got those real thick knees and elbows and wrists, ankles. That really makes them resilient. So I'm gonna finish up here with some arms. Well, I just broke my, uh, this was my very first tripod actually. I bought this when I started this YouTube channel. So honestly, I can't be too mad because that was like 10 years ago or something. Like whenever I started this YouTube channel, 2015, so eight years ago. Crazy to think it's been that long. We try to balance this camera still. So we're gonna try to finish out strong here. We got some incline curls. Guys, I got a set designer coming to the house who's gonna help create a studio in one of my rooms. I'm spending about $8,000 on this for this new YouTube channel I got coming. And I'm really excited about this. Just to get real here for a second, we're gonna talk more about this, but honestly, a couple years ago, I, uh, I went through like a really depressive period in my life. And I was just fucking up a lot. I was doing a lot of bad shit, man. And I had to really address 
some issues in myself because I was losing a lot of people around me. And, you know, I found meditation and I really um, completely changed not just my life, but the life of the people around me. And all my friends and family started telling me just, you know, how good I was doing when I started going through this phase. And I really want to share that with people. But before I jump into that industry and start helping people switch their lives around and uh, man, when I say this stuff helped me guys, it wasn't just helping me with, you know, my mentality and whatnot. It was, it changed my work. I started making more money than ever. I started offering more to my clients than I've ever offered. I started just being better in every area of my life. And so I'm really passionate about sharing this with the world. And I want to just give it to people. And in order to give it to people the cheapest way or even free, I need a lot of money to do that. It's kind of ironic. And so what I'm doing is I'm starting a new fitness company that's going to be geared towards corporate health and wellness and changing the lives of people who, you know, work really busy schedules and whatnot. And I actually want to get inside Google and Facebook and some of these places because I'm a big believer that change starts at the core of the human. I don't think our answers are in politics. I really don't. I think our answers actually lie at just helping people be good people. And it starts with helping them. And if you make them healthier in their lives, they're going to be healthier in life and they're going to do better things in society. And so that's what my whole next company is going to be about is changing people's minds on fitness and doing fitness the right way because personal training is an absolute joke. We all know this. Those weekend certified trainers and all their money gets stolen by corporations. So no good coaches are in personal training. And yet when you go to Google, they subsidize their training and healthcare through this company called Exos, which is just a bunch of weekend certified trainers. I want to teach people how to change their lives for good to where they don't need to hire me after a year or two of working with us. And they can just go and, and be fit for the rest of their life. And I think that's going to help change the world. And then more importantly, it's going to raise the money I need to then go help people. And I want that to be as free as possible. I really believe that everyone should have access to what I'm going to be teaching them completely free of charge, but it's really hard to do in this capitalistic society. So let's get out of the metaphysics and, you know, the self-help stuff. Let's do some incline curls and then we're going to move on. Sorry, the camera angle is not the best to some tricep kickbacks. Whew. Oh man, Whew. I haven't done these in a while. These really get the shoulder into that deep extension and work the bicep differently. Whew. We got a functional circuit here, which always freaks powerlifters out and like anyone in like the serious training space. Like if you if you say the word functional, they're like, ah, oh, snake oil. And it's like, there's no such thing as functional. And it's like, to me, functional just means you can do something.